Awesome, awesome Wednesday morning. So a few changes behind me. If you know, I got a new reading set up. We've moved around where it's located. So now it's kind of like behind me. Um, and the entrance to the laundry room is no longer visible. But my dogs will very likely probably be sitting behind me now. Hope you like dogs because this just became a book and dog channel overnight. <laughs> um, but yeah, so Parsifal is apparently joining our video today. That is uh, Parsifal, my Chihuahua mix. I have three dogs. I have a Chihuahua mix. I have a, we're not even sure what he is, some sort of hound dog, Great Pyrenees, Golden Retriever mix. He's a big hunk of love is what he is, named Odin. And then I have a ancient golden girl named Lily that is a corgi pitbull mix who is about 15 16 years old and you will probably never see her on this channel but um she is my daughter's kind of dog specifically that dog does not leave my daughter's side ever at any given point if my daughter is somewhere like at my mother's or on a vacation or something she might come out and might like hang out with my husband a little bit but for the most part the only person she gives an absolute dang about is my teenage daughter so they are a bonded pair those two so yeah that is a uh, an explanation for what's going on behind me now <laughs> but um we are here to talk about the beloved I ate this book up, you guys. I gave it five star plus. I absolutely love this freaking book. It was so, so insanely good. Holy shit. I love the Black Dagger Brotherhood. Like I have since I was in high school. I think I read my first Black Dagger Brotherhood book around 2002. It is 2024 now. That's a long time. We got water. And we have some very light coffee. Like if I were to show you the color of this, it is like almost the color cream. But I needed something this morning. Uh, it was supposed to be a gym morning, but we ended up rolling over and going back to bed. However, update on the healthier lifestyle track. Um, I'm down 25 pounds and I've kept it off for about almost a month now, or at least all of April. So that's really exciting. I am very proud of myself for keeping it off. I had a doctor's appointment on, I believe it was March 29th, and I had lost 25 pounds from the first of the year. And I weighed myself yesterday morning. It is now the end of April almost. I've actually lost one more pound, not gained any of it back. And so I am thrilled with that. Would I like to lose more than a pound a month? Absolutely. But I know that the like first 20, 25 come off generally pretty easy. And then you really have to fight um, in that calorie de deficit or that ketosis state to get those extra pounds off that you want to get off. So just keep it on trucking along. I didn't gain a bit any weight let back and I had family in town visiting so I'm very, very thrilled about the results of that. But that's neither here nor there. That's just more of a personal update for those of you who have kind of been watching my journey for the last two months as I tried to live a bit of a healthier lifestyle. I was dealing with some really bad anxiety at the beginning of the year, like really bad terrible like I've never experienced and so I made some lifestyle choices started going to therapy and um yeah we've seen incredible results so I knew that it wasn't going to be long before the big boy joins the little boy there um but anywho 
the beloved. I keep getting sidetracked today. I think it's the new setup. It's the new setup. Being able to see the dogs in the camera. It's, it's throwing me off. The beloved. It is the 22nd book in the Black Dagger Brotherhood series. Absolutely loved it. I love the OG Black Dagger Brotherhood. So like your core five or six, Wrath, Rage, Fury, Zadist, Butch. Who am I forgetting? Wrath, Rage, Fury, Zadist, Butch. Wrath, Rage, Fury. Oh, Torment and Vicious. Um, I love them. Torment was my favorite brother in the like original four or five books. Then I really fell in love with John Matthew. Um his storyline as he transitioned into an adult vampire really want to give some of those a reread and then I really loved Layla and Laylock and Quinn and Zor their storyline have not reread those books in so long I think I own them so we may be doing a reread on those I loved the Black Dagger legacy books I mean there's so many books I want to reread that new books need to stop coming out. My TBR is so long. I can't do rereads. I can't do rereads. I'm actually currently rereading at night only. I'm only allowing myself to do it while I lay in bed at night. During the day, I have to read something new. But while I am laying in bed at night, I'm rereading the Chestnut Spring series. I'm on Flawless. I'm almost done with it. It's just been giving me all the summer cowboy vibes. So, yeah, I've been obsessed with rereading that at night in bed. Um, The Beloved was so good. It gave me, like, the OG Black Dagger Brotherhood, Brotherhood book vibes with Nala and Nate's story. This is Nala and Nate's story. Nala is Zadis and Bella's daughter. Nate is the pre-trans that they found um, in that lab murder found him I believe or was it murder I know murder adopted him but I don't think it was murder that necessarily found him I digress he was found being run experiments on by some human scientists and um he's kind of had a really rough transition into the vampire life and just life in general he has a lot of trauma obviously and it's just been a really bad struggle for him. He he kind of attached himself to Raven because he saw her as like a savior figure. But Raven obviously ended up being Lassiter's mate and doesn't feel the same way about Nate that she did or that he did about her. So that devastated him and really set him down a really dark, dark spiral. And that is where he, he's known Nala, like their whole adolescent and growing up. But that's where we, he finds Nala, is during this dark, dark spiral. He's actually in the process of asking Raven if she will end his life because she made him immortal because of all of his suffering. But now he's like, I don't want to live this life. My life sucks. Why would you do this to me? So Raven's like, okay, I will end this, but you have to make peace with every person in your life. Tell them goodbye, do it the right way, and then I will allow you to enter immortality. Well, he can't even say goodbye to Nala. Nonetheless, his father, murder, um, any of them. Like, So they end up falling in love, and Nala has a really angsty, angry relationship with her parents, Bella and Zadist, a lot of this book. Just because Bella and Zetas are such an epic love story and she kind of just feels like a footnote in their story sometimes. Everything is always about Zetas. How is Zetas doing because of his traumas as a um, servant, you know, uh, where he got the slave bands in his original book in like book three of this 22 book series. And just it was really cool to get an insight into what their lives were like and why Bella would feel that not Bella Nala would feel that way which she probably in like the real world I feel like she would feel like she was just a footnote in this epic love story and also Zayden's trauma and how Bella heals him from it so she actually ends up using some of the skills she learned with her mother um dealing with her father's trauma to help Nate and that's when she kind of realizes 
oh gosh, like I'm not just a footnote. They do love me, but it's a different kind of love than what you feel for your Hellren. Like your Hellren is your, your soulmate, you know? She's like, the way I feel about Nate is very different than the way I feel about my parents. It's not less, it's not more, it's different. And she kind of comes to that realization that she would do anything, like literally anything, including like lay down her own life to help Nate. And it makes a lot more sense the way that her parents are and they kind of have a rest reconciliation. So that's like the main storyline for this book. But in the background, we are having a storyline that I am very excited about, have been waiting a very long time for. And I really hope it's the next book to come to fruition. That's LW, Little Wrath, um, Wrath and Beth's son, the king's son. And Biddy, the adopted daughter of Rage and Mary. So Biddy came into the lives, I think during The Beast, I think is around the time that Biddy came into Rage and Mary's life. She was left um, at the safe place, which is Mary's house that they have for abused women. Uh, because apparently that happens a lot in the vampire community with just, I guess, some of the things male vampires have going on or like the amount of hormone in them. I don't know, but apparently abusive relationships are very common in the vampire world. The way they explain it, it makes sense. Like, yeah, all of these aggressions and hormones and things going through these male vampires, I guess it would happen more frequently or... Maybe not even more frequently than the human world, but they just have a better system in play to take care of these women. And um, so it's a, a situation where the mother and Biddy go to the safe place to get away from her husband, her Halgren, who has been abusing them. And um, the mother ends up dying there. And so Biddy becomes kind of orphaned um, in, because obviously they're not going to let her go with this abusive father of hers. And Rage and Mary take her in and they adopt her. And this was like 10 books ago. And so you've kind of watched Biddy grow up in the background. There's a massive time jump in this book of 30 years. From the end of Lassiter to the Beloved is a 30 year time jump. Because Wrath dies and comes back. It's a lot going on. I didn't mind the time jump. A lot of people hated the time jump. They were like, no, I need to know what was going on in that 30 years. Don't just tell me in a matter of 30 or 40 pages, you know, what's going on. And it didn't bother me that much. In order to get to the juice, in order to get to the good stuff, which is the next generation stories, I was okay with the time jump because it gave me so much like, I was excited to read this book and the last couple of books from this series have been a little bogged down with information for me and it's just been so much going on. People that weren't even in the main storylines and I just didn't enjoy the last couple like book 20 and 21 as much as I did this book and I think it's because we felt like we were getting back to the core crew. So I'm very excited about LW and Biddy's relationship that I hope we're going to see come to fruition in the next book. It is something that I've been looking forward to for a while since Biddy as a character was introduced and I kind of got a feeling she was going to meet with LW. There was only so many young male vampires around right now. So yeah, very excited for that book. I cannot wait for it. I hope it comes out soon. I know it's going to be like a year or so. Which sucks, but that's okay. It gives them something to look forward to. I love you guys so, so much. I hope you're having an amazing, amazing week. This has been a long video. Um, I could talk about Black Dagger Brotherhood all day, though. Funny enough, Black Dagger Brotherhood was one of the first videos I ever recorded on this channel three and a half years ago, or however long it has been now. Almost, no, it's been like four years because I started doing this in 2020 after the lockdown. Wow, I've been on YouTube for four years now. But yeah, uh, Black Dagger Brotherhood was one of the very first videos I ever covered four years ago. And um, now I have a video on the 22nd book. So it's pretty fun and pretty crazy. But I love you guys so much. Thanks for liking, subscribing, sharing. It makes me want to continue to do this. And uh, yeah, I hope that if you are a Black 
Dagger Brotherhood reader, you go check out The Beloved. It's way, way worth it. It was excellent. I gave it five star plus on that one. So I'll see you guys on Saturday with another book review.